My take on it was very simple. If you can go into the woods and climb Mount Musawai and work with a group of people to successfully complete a freshman trip, then the rest of it should be a piece of cake for you. as we congregate to celebrate how we've collaborated to contribute to this mountain and this college that we hold so dear. Before continuing with our program, I just want to introduce quickly a few special guests who I'll be introducing further in the program. First of all, we have our provost, David Post. on the earlier trips. We actually went back home and then returned to Hanover for freshman week once the dorms were officially open. So I went back to Barrington, Rhode Island and couldn't wait to tell my parents about the amazing night and next morning that I spent in the old Musalak Ravine Lodge. Here we heard ghost stories, we danced the salty dog rag, we were fed green eggs and ham, and we learned some Darton songs. We were first taught the alma mater and Darton fight songs. Of course, I proceeded with my little song sheet to try to sing these for my parents. <laughs> Other than, make the echoes ring for Dartmouth. I don't think there was a bit of one of those songs that I could have really done justice to. But little did I know how much those songs would become a part of my Dartmouth experience as a member of the Dartmouth College Glee Club. So that all started right here. Unlike many of you, I didn't return to this mountain until this year when we were working on our bunkhouse. And I thought, well, what's, it's interesting, my two visits here, both my first and second, do have something in common. They pushed me out of my comfort zone. When I was on my freshman trip, I had never been on a hiking trip in my life before. <laughs> when I came back to work on our bunkhouse, I spent four hours on the rafters of the woodshed putting a roof on. I had never done that before in my life either. <laughs> so both times, <laughs> it pushed me out of my comfort zone. But isn't that what Dartmouth's all about? Didn't Dartmouth many times push us out of our comfort zones? For many of us, coming to Dartmouth was our first time living away from home. We may have come from different regions, different climates, different countries. Perhaps it was through Dartmouth that you first visited another country, you know, through LSA or FSP. Many of us learned to ski at the Dartmouth Skiway. We may have paddled down to Connecticut in a canoe. And many of you did hike the many miles of the Appalachian Trail that our college you know, has maintained. So we were constantly being pushed outside of our, our comfort zones. For many of you gathered in this room who participated either in the Timber Framing Workshop Week or one of the work weekends over the course of this summer and fall, we also were pushed out of our comfort zones. We had to leave cell phone service. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really want to make this about the bunkhouse this afternoon and to share a lot more about what led to today. It's been a two and a half year journey getting to the dedication ceremony today. I would like to introduce one of the co-chairs of the bunkhouse steering committee, Charlie Wise. <laughs> For all of those, uh, for those of you who know me well, I am starting a clock, <laughs> and I will do my best to adhere to that. Barbie's asked me to talk particularly about three or four things. 
One is a bit about the origin of the class of 78's involvement which, with what has become the magnificent class of 1978 bunkhouse. The second is a little bit about the steering committee and the greater participation effort that we put together to make it happen. Um, and the third is to talk a little bit, although I cannot do it justice, and Rick Byers' video does, it will be running in a loop later on, to talk a little bit about the Timber Framing Workshop Week, which brought many classmates here to help build, and then the subsequent work weekends. Um, and then last, to talk just a little bit about the donor recognition boards, which are the plaques we have up in the bunkhouse, one of it which is here, which we will reveal in a little while, um, which really showed the great extent of the participation that we gave. Um, so to begin, as Barbie said, two and a half years ago, um, Tim McNamara and Jim Bassett were at um, a meeting here of the College Grant Committee, and there was discussion about what needed to be built, which was the fifth bunkhouse, rounding out the renaissance of the Ravine Lodge complex. And there was not a funder. The glimmer in Jim's eye. <laughs> Within a month or two, actually, Steve Thompson and Jim Bassett, um, and um, uh, Steve Thompson, Jim Bassett, and Dave Graham um, were together at an AD gathering um, out west, and they started talking real turkey. Phones started to ring within a week or so after, in August of 2016, including one to me, my wife Cheryl Newman, 76, will remember it well. When I hang up, she said, you didn't volunteer for something. <laughs> <laughs> Others in this room, many of the steering committee are here, and I'll talk a little bit more about them. But from August of 2016, we began to put this together particularly with an idea towards trying to reach out to as many classmates as we could. Um, one way we did that, thanks to Lex Bon Bunchu and Mary Brown, who found the original rosters of our 1974 freshman trips. Found them in Rounder, and that gave us an opportunity to reach out by classmates who had been on trips to their fellow trip mates in a way that had never been done before, uh, whether it was by phone or by email, through a combination of those that reach out via the freshman trip lists and also by freshman dorms, we got, we think, to about 250 or 300 classmates with that personal touch from someone they had lived down the hall from and or went on a trip with. What that has meant in terms of how many additional sort of classmates we've brought out of the woodwork is still a little bit hard to tell, but we had a goal to enlarge the participation. The bottom line on that is almost 400 living classmates made a financial donation or came and worked on the bunkhouse. In addition to that, gifts were given in memory of our deceased classmates. So we have well over 400 class of 78 names on this donor recognition board, and we think that's quite something. Mm -hmm. well, one of the we're working so hard as a steering committee, Scott Brown, largely responsible for pulling together another 40 or so classmates who are the Greater Bunkhouse Committee, let's call it the Letterhead Group, <laughs> but all of whom worked in various ways, both giving money and coming to swing a hammer or wield a chisel, and along that time, I've already mentioned Lex and, and Mary Brown, the building committee with Scott Barthold and Scott Brown and Jim Bassett working, of course, alongside Tim McNamara and with Eileen Heath, our architect, were working to finalize the plans for the bunkhouse. Um, Bill Paganelli in on that, Steve Thompson in on that as well. And the great pleasure for us was reaching out and talking with so, so many classmates about this to make it happen. By the time we got to reunion, um, and thanks in part to the assistance of the Dartmouth College Fund, Sandy Swain Bromwell is here, and her colleague, um, Pat Krim, um, we had reached at least 90% of the class to offer the opportunity to be part of this project. Um, at the time of our reunion last year, uh, we had almost 300 classmates and almost tipped 1 million. 
that last 100 classmates and 100,000 was a bit slow in coming, but we got there this spring, which leads me to the timber framing workshop. About 30 of us, with various spouses and significant others, and a number of non-78s, gathered right here, stayed in the existing bunkhouses, and worked to fashion the 100 and something, David Hook, 100 and something timbers, um, the posts and beams um, that were then raised on that Friday. I've talked about wielding the chisel and swinging the hammers and mallets. That's what we were at. That's what we were at. Please, while you're here, take a look at the video that Rick Beyer put together. Some of you have seen some of it, but there's a lot more of that construction story. I won't try to explain more about that camarader, camaraderie and that great sense of accomplishment other than in two ways. Somebody at the end of that week said, this is the greatest alumni gathering I have ever been to. And it was. I will read a little bit later a poem that Andy Welch wrote that Friday, <laughs> that Friday evening. But I'll save that for, uh, I'll save that for a moment. Talk for a moment about the um, Donor Recognition Board. I want to thank particularly Nancy My Mayor Friedman for her tremendous efforts joining Tim McNamara and me in putting this together. No one will ever know just how much time we spent on this. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has raised her hand. <laughs> we hope that all of you will enjoy it as much as we do, but we think that it's a testimony to the legacy that we're leaving here for the college. There will be one of each of these on each level of the bunkhouse, and you'll hear some more from Tim Burdick a little bit later about the special role that the class of 78 bunkhouse is playing in this new Ravine Lodge complex. So I've probably run over time a little bit. Somehow my phone has been recording. How awful is that? <laughs> but we will make sure that we don't replay that. <laughs> According to this, I'm only at about five and a half minutes, so we're okay. But I want now, with great thanks to Andy Welch, to read his poem. I hope that I do an okay job. Can I give you a little context just on the first Please. section? So I was nervous coming to this workshop. I hadn't timber framed. I hadn't done any alumni thing. There were a lot of names on the list of participants that I didn't recognize. So I approached the whole thing, you know, timber framing. What if I can't do it? What if these people don't like me? <laughs> it was like freshman week. All over. <laughs> so, as we all know, anxiety creates unusual behaviors, and, and, and my unusual behavior was my internal editor shut off. But only in my interactions with the lodge crew. And I had a series of interactions with the lodge crew that just kept me up at night the next Night. I, got, I apologize. <laughs> Whenever I saw somebody in the lodge crew, I just went, that's scary. <laughs> so that'll, that'll. All right. and, and thank you, Andy, for that background, which has also allowed me to take another quick look at my notes. Um, I left out somebody quite important, KB Bolton and Kendrick, who worked tremendously hard in the last couple of months on the signage for the bunkhouse. All we have in place right now are sort of facsimiles of what will wind up there. But Kay, wherever you are, thank you very much. So I think I'll do justice to Andy's point. To the class of 78 bunkhouse, where everything's okay. I've said nothing awful to Lodge crew, at least not so far today. <laughs> and I'm learning a lot about chisels, saws, and kerfs and such. It seems an equitable trade to me, because I won't miss that finger too much. <laughs> and now our task is wrapping up. I guess all good things must end, but will keep forever in our hearts this mountain, this lodge, and these friends. on behalf of the class of 1978 to present the class of 1978 bunkhouse as a gift to Dartmouth College. Thank you very much for the opportunity 
for all of us to have come together in this way. Provost? <laughs> Bunkhouse, it is appropriately attached to one yes. of our reunion, yes. our reunion right. sessions. <laughs> eminently useful for all sorts of things, which reminds me of one other piece. After we wind up here, not quite done, but when we do wind up, we will be tapping the Moussa Oktoberfest <laughs> beer from Meyer's Bench so that everybody can wet their whistle a touch if they'd like. We'll also have water out and later on other beverages. Um, for the tours of the bunkhouse and all else. But Provost, our pleasure. <laughs> class of 86 and is our interim provost. He is the champion international professor of computer science here at Dartmouth, or I believe he's been on faculty about 27 years. Taught, but, well, yeah, it's less than 40 that we've been since graduation, so that's still a good number. Um, he's taught over a dozen courses, many of them in his specialty area of cybersecurity. In addition, he has mentored over 100 student researchers written 135 papers, and the part that really intrigued me is Charlie should have been calling me because I found out that Dave Coates has raised $65 million in grant funding. We could have used you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, as an undergrad, Dave was very active in the outing club and continues to be an avid hiker and outdoorsman and photographer as well. Just this week, he participated in a town meeting in Hanover, and I couldn't help but share this metaphor that he gave in his remarks this week. He said, I'm also a hiker and a camper. And I have a sense of ethics that you leave a campsite cleaner and nicer than when you arrived. And he hopes he's done the same with the provost's office, which he was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this past year may have also given you some opportunities to step outside of your comfort zone. Indeed. <laughs> I'll be well on Dave Coates. <laughs> Barbie, and thanks to all of you for coming. It's my great pleasure to accept this bunkhouse on behalf of the college. Uh, I say that as a faculty member and as the interim provost, but also as a chubber and as an alum myself. I'm 86, as she mentioned, and I, someone asked me last night, what was my major in college? And my first answer was immediately outing club. <laughs> because I'm sure I spent more hours there than I did in my other majors. Uh, and, and many of my contemporaries here can probably attest to that. So it's, um, the neat thing about this bunkhouse to me, as uh, Charlie mentioned, is that it's the capstone to what I think some of us are now calling the Musawak campus. You call it the complex, but I think actually of it as a campus because it is a place for learning, among so many other things. And the 78 Bunk House, as you know, is the final piece in this new campus. This centerpiece, of course, is the lodge, but we have uh, several other bunk houses and the crew um, camp uh, quarters as well. So it's, to me, a place for learning in, as well as recreation. It's a place for experiential learning that starts with DOC trips, <coughs> formerly called freshman trips. And that's where I was introduced to this place, but I've come back hundreds of times since, and I know that people, students of generation after generation have learned through uh, trail crew and lodge crew and um, research groups, and now with this facility and the bunkhouses to support it, increasing numbers of curricular and co-curricular groups as well. So in that broader context, I have many people to thank, and I'm going to start with Pat Blodgett, class of 53, who has been chair of the Musilak Advisory Committee for many years, and whose vision really, I think, is culminating with today's dedication. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> to our programs office, which oversees the Musilak campus and the lodge and its bunkhouses, and our campus facilities partners, 
um, who embarked on a master planning process for this area in 2011. So this is the culmination of that planning process. And there are many people involved in that, many of them who are here today, Joanna Whitcomb, for example. Thank you, Joanna. And uh, <laughs> Vice President for Facilities Operations and Maintenance, Frank Roberts. Bob White from ORW Landscape Architects, who produced a comprehensive vision for siting and landscape preservation, and for, in my experience, working with him last fall, right down to individual plants that we were transplanting and arranging as the lodge was constructed. Is Bob here today? No? Oh, thank you, Bob, anyway. <laughs> And Bill McClay and Eileen He from McClay Architects. Eileen is here, I know. I don't know if Bill is here. No? They're <laughs> <laughs> the ones who created these extraordinary designs for the bunkhouses uh, that have been popping up around this campus for several years. And of course, the classes of 65, 66, 67, 74, and 84, who, as you just heard, have put time and treasure into making these bunkhouses a reality. Thank you to all of those classes, and especially the 78. <laughs> and a very extra special thank you to David Hook, 84, and Timber Holmes, who have been the guiding light for so, all, every single one of these projects, Bunkhouse projects, starting with the 84, and I think David had something to do with keeping <laughs> off that. <laughs> his entire crew and his vision that Building these are not just a construction project, but a learning exercise. And those of you who participated in the, in the workshop that started the 78 construction, I had the uh, joy of helping with the 66, know exactly what that means. It's an opportunity for a community to come together and make something and learn something along the way. So thank you, David. Mm -hmm. that we dedicate today the, uh, and the magnificent commitment of the class of 1978 to this wonderful new space and to completing this vision of the Musulok campus. And in particular, thanks to Barbie, Dave, Charlie, and all the 78s for, uh, uh, for helping make this reality. Uh, Charlie has mentioned many of them and, and I will have, I hope, many other opportunities that, this afternoon to thank you. Um, and to David and the crew from Timber Homes, we're grateful again for your talents and opportunities to bring so many of us together to uh, help with this bunkhouse. I was pleased to spend a day with David and, and, a, and a few others, oiling and drilling and sanding and screwing a whole bunch of things trying to get the bunkhouse initiated last month. Um, unfortunately, I've only had time for one day on this bunkhouse, but, uh, and I'm sad, therefore, this is the last bunkhouse, the last chance for me. Of course, there have been many others involved to the staff from subcontractors BMD Electric, Gosselin Concrete, Carter Sprinkler Systems, and ARC Mechanical. We're deeply, deeply grateful for their work on this project as well. And last but certainly not least, to Tim McNamara. Tim, of course, as you know, is a 78, but also as project manager of this bunkhouse and so many other, if not every other facility on this campus. Everyone, Tim? A little bit, not this. Not this, <laughs> yes, well, close. But we really appreciate all of your work you've put into this and for everything you continue to do at Dartmouth. Thank you. So, as I said, this bunkhouse is the kind of capstone to the whole Musala campus. Uh, I, I have a deep personal connection to this space. And I know that bunkhouse will have an especially important role to play. I mentioned in passing the trail crew. Um, that is one of the crews that is based at Musalak over the summer. And this new facility will provide them, finally, a proper place to live, if you will. Um, and this, therefore, you'll see, has a sleeping space for the trail crew and storage space for their gear and their clothing and so forth, and, and, a, and an opportunity, really, for them to have a fantastic home base for their hard work 
And again, as the trail crew, they are supporting all of Dartmouth's cabins and trails in terms of maintenance, but it's also, again, an experiential learning opportunity for them. And then on the upper floor, there's space for research groups. So again, we can now have, as we did actually in the past, long-term stays by uh, groups from Dartmouth or other uh, Northeastern colleges who want to come for a week or a month and spend time at Musilak using this space for teaching and learning and research. And they, that has not really fit very well in recent decades with the bunkhouses that we have, and now finally we have a space for that. So I'm really excited by this new bunkhouse and by the, all the other infrastructure here, and I can't wait to see where it will go next. So again, thank you on behalf of the college. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you later this afternoon. Thank you so much, Dave. And as you heard, there are some aspects of our bunkhouse that make it quite unique relative to the others here on this campus. Um, in a minute, I'm going to ask our new Director of Outdoor Programs Office, Tim Burke, to come up and share a little bit about how that bunkhouse will be used. But I'd also like to share a little bit first about Tim. He is also new to the role. He's a class of 89, as well as a graduate of the Dartmouth Medical School in 2002. Um, he, I turn to the right page here, excuse me, but Tim is, um, sorry, there we go. He, when you, he was announced, Bio is fine. <laughs> <laughs> when he was announced in the role, it was interesting. He shared that, as I mentioned, he's both Dartmouth undergrad and medical school, and here he is as the director of outdoor programs. So he shared that he is a, this gives him a unique opportunity to combine his outdoor passion and experience with his wilderness med medicine and risk management, along with his leadership and management skills, all back at his alma mater. While at Dartmouth, Tim held leadership positions in the Dartmouth. Uh, Led the canoe club, the ski patrol, cabin and trail. He was involved with DOC first year trips. And then after graduation, Tim taught science in, in outdoor education for five years while earning his master's in science of forestry, believe it or not, at Virginia Tech. And then returned to the Hanover Plain to go to the med school. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Tim to talk a little bit more about the impact of our bunkhouse with the outdoor programs. Please welcome Tim. I'm going to skip the introduction because you just uh, heard that, but I do want to start by saying that I'm uh, just deeply humbled to be here uh, in my new role and today to be here in front of this group. I look out and see faces of people that have mentored me from the time that I was 18 years old, um, and it's just a, a real honor and privilege to be here. Uh, so thank you to all of you who have um, helped undergraduates throughout the years become adults or attempted to bring them along to adulthood. <laughs> and thank you specifically to the class of 78 for all of your efforts to, to round out this campus. As has been mentioned before, the bunkhouse that we have today is really a, a unique feature within the outdoor programs portfolio. We have many beautiful bunkhouses that have been built over the years primarily with the aim for outdoor recreation. And now we have one that is uniquely and explicitly for research, education, and then the stewardship and community service role that comes from trail building. Those pieces um, are important parts of outdoor programs. So we think of the outing club and outdoor programs as the salty dog rag in front of Robinson Hall in, in uh, early September. We think about outdoor recreation trips all over the country and all over the world now. What's, what's implicit often is the fact that really the Outing Club is about education. It's about learning how to become leaders, um, how to become stewards of the landscape that we spend our time in. The bunkhouse, as with the other facilities we have, is a way to, to uh, create those opportunities for our undergraduates. The students last year, the undergraduate students, produced uh, 10,000 days of outdoor programming uh, in the various trips that they led. 10,000 days, that's a lot of, of trips. There were also more than 4,000 hours of trail work produced last year by the students. Having a place to, to live for a large chunk of that during the summertime would really change that. And I want to thank Tim McNamara for helping put that together and particularly putting in a, 
a very, very large air exchange system, so that when the trail comes, <laughs> trail comes in at the end of the day, we can, we can recycle that air outside at a pretty high rate. So that, was, that was a great move. <laughs> we have research programs ongoing at various facilities. We have environmental studies, earth science programs, doing soil studies. We have long-term projects up on the summit vegetation that partner with Antioch College. For those of you who remember, we had the, the MET station, the meteorologic station, back in the 80s, looking at acid rain. So the history goes back many, many decades. We haven't had a real facility to do that. And, and again, we now have a place that's explicitly calling out the role of the Musilak campus to, to take on that educational and co-curricular um, activities. I want to expand to a little bit higher level as well and, and point out that, that that bunkhouse is a manifestation of, of educational activities within outdoor activities in a much broader scale as well. We have the second college grant with 27,000 acres there. We have Oak Hill with hundreds of acres, the organic farm. The Dartmouth Skiway has been a site for research of various kinds, uh, including peregrine uh, falcon work over the years. Outdoor programs is, is situated within the college to, to help students do both recreational activities, as I mentioned, but really to look at the, the educational portfolio of how we use outdoor space to provide educational services to the students. Um, the, the, the bunkhouse that we have is, is also one of the few around that is winterized, so we can continue our activities here throughout the year now. And that brings back to the Moose Lock campus, the winter activities that we had up until the 1950s when they started shutting the campus down in the winter time. And I'm really looking forward to working with the students, with researchers, with other community partners to start coming back to this campus in the winter time again as well. I got a, a, a letter in the mail this week. It was on yellowed parchment paper. It was handwritten in, uh, in ink, like a quill pen. It was a little hard to read. It said, Dear Dr. B, thank you so much for um, bringing research back to Moose Lock. I look forward to participating with research programs around Moose Lock campus. Very much signed, Dr. Benton. <laughs> reminded me that actually research on this on this facility goes back literally hundreds of years. <laughs> and, and as I read the letter again, it occurred to me that perhaps the narrative of Doc Benton has been misunderstood. And, and I think he actually is just a, a misunderstood character who, who wants to be brought into the fold and not seen as a, you know, a, an outsider anymore. And so I, I, I tried to let, write him a letter back, but I wasn't sure where to reach him. But I went ahead and I created a a white coat for, for Doc Benton, <laughs> geriatric research. <laughs> and I'm hoping that if we hang this up on campus long enough that he'll come back into the fold and, and you know, partner with us on, on a new round of research. Um, and hopefully we'll spend some time at the 78 Bunkhouse as a friend. <laughs> Once again, thank you to 78, to all of those of you who've been partners in building the 78 Bunkhouse for extending, extending the Moose Lock campus, whether you're a uh, class of 78, former uh, deans, present provosts, alumni, friends of the college. So thank you all very much. I'd like to invite Class Vice President Jim Bassett to come up. I introduced a special honored guest earlier, and at this time, I'd like Jim to make that special presentation for us. Thanks very much, Barbie. It's uh, incredible to be here today because I do remember it was two and a half years ago that uh, Dan Nelson, Tim's predecessor, and Tim and I were meeting over in the 65 bunkhouse and uh, we're members of the grant management committee and the discussion was about how there wasn't a class that was stepping up to build the final bunkhouse at Musalak and uh, 
Dan talked about why it was so important and what would happen and the research and the trail crew. And uh, Tim and I looked at each other and we said, you know, I think maybe we can do this. And uh, we left that meeting and talked with each other and then we talked with Dave Graham and uh, said, do you, Dave, do you think our class would do this? And uh, the three of us decided, yeah, let's see if we can make it happen. And we brought in so many people and uh, it's just amazing now that uh, two and a half years later this has happened. And uh, Musalak's very special to me. I, I live pretty near here, and I reckon I've been up the mountain probably 300 times. Um, it's uh, the place I go to center myself, and uh, we were up there today, and uh, the sun came out just as we were leaving the summit, I think uh, kind of metaphorically, because of uh, such a special day. I do remember the first time I was here, and uh, Dean Manuel was leading our class in song, and uh, I had never been here, I had never been up the mountain, and uh, I remember uh, the Dean talking about his love of Dartmouth, his love of Musalak, and uh, I'd never really experienced anything like that before, and uh, that transformed my life, and I think the reason we're here is that it transformed all of our lives. And so, uh, one of the great things, uh, I was uh, co-chair of our 35th reunion a couple of years ago, and uh, in that process I got to reconnect with Dean Manuel, and we asked him to speak. I think a number of you remember him speaking that evening, and then since then, Dean Manuel and I have gotten together for breakfast every couple months at Lou's, which is always a great, <laughs> great experience. And uh, about two years ago, I told him that we were going to be doing this, that our class had taken on the mission of building the last bunkhouse and uh, uh, Ralph said it was that was incredible and that our class it was a particularly meaningful to him because he looks at our class as something incredibly special because we're kind of his class he was dean of freshmen mm -hmm. when we were freshmen and then he became dean for our final three years at Dartmouth so I think Dean Manuel belongs to us, and we belong to Dean Manuel in a way that uh, is incredible. And uh, I told him that we were going to be doing this, and uh, so it's very fitting that uh, we recognize uh, Dean Manuel for uh, bringing us all into the Dartmouth family 44 years ago. And uh, in recognition of that special relationship that we have with Dean Manuel, there are. Uh, plaques that will be, um, we're going to, I'm going to give this, we're going to give this plaque yeah. to Dean Manuel. Um, I was going through the college archives for other reasons uh, about a year or two ago and I asked uh, Peter Carini, the college archivist, uh, what they had for pictures of Musalak and the class of 78. And uh, he sent me this, an email with this photograph in it, <laughs> which is uh, Dean Manuel leading our class in song. And you all might be able to recognize yourselves there, but the two people that are immediately recognizable other than Dean Manuel, uh, who was uh, singing are uh, Lex von Bunshu and Annie McLean Custer, who are in it. <laughs> uh, we had three of these plaques made. One will be in the ground floor where the trail crew will be. Uh, one will be upstairs, and then uh, today we're going to present this to Dean Manuel and let me read it before I can't give it to him on behalf of our class. The class of 1978 bunkhouse. The class of 1978 honors Ralph Manuel, Dartmouth class of 1958. He served as Dean of Freshmen when we matriculated and as Dean of the college when we graduated. Dean Manuel introduced to this, us to the Dartmouth spirit and then sent us round the girdled earth. And this is says D. Manuel leading members of the class of 1978 in song at the Ravine Lodge during freshman trips in September of 1974. And this plaque and D. Manuel's spirit will inspire many, many years of 
first years uh, who are going to be here into the next century. So thank you very much, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, in Hanover, where we attended all kinds of freshman orientation, we signed the honor code, we matriculated in the tower room with Baker Library, etc. Most of us, on June 11, 1978, that's when we had our commencement. And at that point, we transitioned from being undergraduates, going into the wide, wide world, and becoming members of the tremendous family of Dartmouth alumni of which so many of our speakers here today are also part of that great family that we joined. As we became you know, alums, we changed our relationship with the college on the hill and on this hill. And we have made, continued that relationship today. So I'd like to introduce in a minute our new vice president, as I say, of alumni relations, Cheryl Bascom. Cheryl's a member of the class of 82. So she didn't, unless she did a five-year program, she didn't overlap with us. But Cheryl has a very close relationship with the class of 79, because her yeah. husband David Van Wee is in 79. She has a very close relationship with the class of 77, because her sister-in-law, Susan Van Wee, is a 77. So I thought today we need to make sure that she starts to establish a very close relationship with the class of 1978 as well. I also want to mention that Cheryl, while she was an undergrad, was a member of the rugby team, co-captain of track and cross country, and she uh, also a member of Kappa Kappa Gamma, which was the second sorority at Dartmouth. I was a member of the first one, along with Kappa Kappa, a few other people there. <laughs> yes. um, but the, uh, she also is a Dartmouth mom. And nine members of our executive committee were here for class officers weekend a few weeks ago in September. We had the opportunity to first meet Cheryl then. And she shared her excitement for the vision of the college and especially for our Sester Centennial. That's a new word we all learned, which is for our 250th anniversary. And speaking of anniversaries, today is Cheryl and David's wedding anniversary. So I'd like to welcome Cheryl. We want to have that relationship with the accomplished and generous class of 78, and we're delighted you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Well, my role today really is to celebrate you, but as you can tell, I love this stuff. <laughs> I am a parent. 
husband, a spouse, a daughter-in-law, a sister-in-law, and yeah, I'm spending my anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I have the coolest job in the world. I got to participate in the bonfire committee. And there are people who would volunteer and did to do that, to really make sure that we have a safe and wonderful event for our alumni to come back to. But I got to do it as my day job. So it's wonderful. <laughs> and in fact, when I heard who was it that quoted, I think it was you, Barbie, so no, I'm sorry, it was Charlie, who said, you all had the most fun alumni event ever. Warms my heart. That's <laughs> great. That is the kind of thing. And challenge accepted. <laughs> but I welcome you, the accomplished and generous class of 1978, and thank yeah. you for your individual and collective contributions and your generosity to the college and your warm recognition of a man who was your dean of the college, your freshman dean, but also mine as well, mm -hmm. someone we dearly love, Ralph Mann. Mm -hmm. successful in any way you measure it. You've got CEOs, you've got current and former politicians, and you've got current and former trustees of Dartmouth. And yet, you define success more broadly. In Nick Lowry, you have one of the most successful kickers in NFL history. In James Newman, you have the ultimate explorer, an astronaut with four shuttle missions under his belt. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Blanchard has run a marathon in all 50 states. And Jim Bassett, as he told you, may have climbed Mount Musilock more than any other Dartmouth graduate. <laughs> <laughs> all of that is amazing. You have teachers, you have professors, you have nonprofit leaders, and more. And you've given us Bob Suplicus of Dartmouth Athletics <laughs> to celebrating 40 years of employment at Dartmouth. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure he knows that. <laughs> and you have given us Walter Monquist, two-time Olympian. And <laughs> so we are, we are grateful to all you have contributed. And you have some amazing individuals in your class, as you've heard. But you really left your mark on Dartmouth and on the world by what you've done collectively, from the class of 1978 Life Sciences Building to today's bunkhouse. Permanent reminders of an impressive group of individuals who meet the world and make it better together. So thank you. As, a, as an alumni relations professional, I am inspired. And yes, I accept the challenge to try and make sure that others can follow in your footsteps and be as generous and accomplished as you've been. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And before I go to the next section, I did want to just highlight some things about our donor recognition board because it, it reflects on what Cheryl just said. It is the complete conference. Everybody's just listed alphabetically. You go to many universities or places and you see, you know, the silver signature, this, you know, and it's ranked by how large it gets. Every 78 who contributed a dollar or many zeros after that dollar or contributed any time to working on our bunkhouse, their names are listed here alphabetically. We spend a lot of time on that. It's what's <laughs> but they are, they are all listed here. And then at the bottom, we have some significant others who either were, were significant others of classmates, some other alums who came back for their love of the college, some individuals who have no affiliation with the college but are supporters of Dartmouth Outdoors. And so when you get a chance to take a look at the donor recognition board up front, you'll see that there were contributions by various groups of people as well that I just really wanted to highlight. Barbara, could I just love to I forgot to mention, and Barbara just has, but with uh, another shout out to Tim McNamara, these donor recognition boards were fabricated with wood from the first college grant. Oh. <laughs> now, as a piece, as delighted as I am that all of you, whether it's the architects, the Vermont Timber Homes, all of you who participate in the workshop, our class members and guests, honored guests, as delighted as I am that all of you are here with us today, I know there's one person that deserves to be here more than anyone and that we wish was here with us today. 
and that's Dave Graham. Yeah. Yeah. My predecessor is class president and co-chair with Charlie of the Bunkhouse um, Steering Committee. He embraced this project from the first time that was proposed to him, and then when he transitioned out of being class president, became co-chair, and really drove us across the finish line to ensure that we'd be here today, you know, on October 20th, 2018, to dedicate this bunkhouse. I know how much Dave wanted to be here, but he's suffering from vertigo, and so he just absolutely could not fly across country. I reached out to Dave, I said, you need to be part of this ceremony. So I asked him if he would write some words that I could share on his behalf with all of you. So I'd now like to read a letter from Dave that some of you on the Bunkhouse Steering Committee have already seen, complete with where I should pause. So <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Okay, I lie. <laughs> when I took over as class president in the summer of 2010, I said I would not raise money. I had and have been a regular contributor to Dartmouth, but not a major contributor. And thank God for those major contributors. They know who they are and don't seek the limelight, but God bless them because we wouldn't be here today without them. But I told the powers that be that I was willing to become class president and make the trains run on time, but I was not a money raiser. Okay, so I lied. <laughs> Due to our class's good fortune of having Tim McNamara and Jim Bassett on the College Grant Committee, I became a D78 Bunkhouse champion and a money raiser. Yes, I lied. <laughs> By nature, I am a glass half full kind of guy and thus became intent on a D78 Bunkhouse being a legacy gift. We discussed it beginning in the spring of 2016 and began to embark on this effort to add to our legacy, albeit in a smaller but more populous way than the Class of 1978 Life Sciences Center. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did that, but we did this too. The, we, the class of 1978, the accomplished and generous class of 1978, yes, we did. We raised over 1.1 million, almost double that of every other class. We built a bunkhouse, in fact, that is a double bunkhouse on the most demanding site here on the campus. We reached 40% participation which is nearly 10% higher than every other class that built a bunkhouse here. That means we had nearly 400 contributors from our class, and we did so without leaving any classmates who predeceased us behind. The donor recognition boards, of which there are two, reflect this fact, and they could not have been realized without the time and talent of Tim, Nancy Mayer Friedman, Barbie, and especially Charlie Wise. In truth, we spent nearly as much time on the DRBs as we did on the bunkhouse itself. <laughs> That's a story for another place in time. I believe that the college has three enduring values. First, an unwavering commitment to undergraduate education. Second, developing an appreciation for the great outdoors, whether that be on the athletic fields, the trails and mountaintops, or bodies of water like the Connecticut or Mascoma. This bunkhouse gift buttresses the first and directly addresses the latter two. We believe in all three. The Class of 78 Life Sciences Center certainly addresses the first, and in a very big way. But this bunkhouse addresses the latter two values in an equally big way. Musilak is an important touchstone for Dartmouth. It speaks loudly to the college's commitment to the outdoors and to its strong sense of community. First year trips, which now garner over 90% of incoming students, end here. It will be their first, but certainly not their last, contact with Dartmouth and the class of 1978. We are accomplished and generous. This was without question truly a team effort. It took two and a half years, but now here we stand. It could not have been accomplished without the many hours of volunteer work put in by countless numbers of classmates. Hopefully members of the Bunkhouse Steering Committee will be singled out at another point during the dedication. Rather than list them now, I hope to give each of them a more personal thank you in the days ahead, but each are deserving of all the accolades that come their way. Yet it remains my greatest honor to have been class president during part of this time. My biggest reward has been to work with classmates, many of whom I did not know back in the day. To those, I simply say, you have enriched my life immeasurably. This bunkhouse is a testament to your love for and commitment to the college. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. It would not have been possible without you. You have the still north in your hearts and the hill winds in your veins. This testimony. I will never lie about. <laughs> Carpe D78. <Dave. laughs> so as I just 
read, one of Dave's favorite ways to close an email or any class newsletter or address is uh, Carpe D78. And I think we'll all be paying him royalties for decades to come on that. And the exterior of our funk house will eventually also have that Carpe D78 logo and motto on it as well. And I hope we all can sincerely take Dave's advice in Carpe Diem and Carpe, Carpe D78. At this time, I'd like to thank all of those who made this funk house possible. Many of their names are listed, the steering committees, the design committees, our architect, our, on the donor recognition board, as well as in your programs. Um, and I also want to thank all the support we received from the college. Again, some of their names are in the program, you know, from the Dartmouth College Fund office. There were so many people who made this possible. But without the work of a couple of people, we would not have a bunkhouse or a board to be talking about it all this afternoon. So if I could now have Bob Gray and Jim Bassett come up and join me for a minute for a few special thank yous. should be on the board. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Share them out with Dave as soon as we can get internet connection again. <laughs> Following the concluding benediction and singing of the alma mater, and I know the words have changed since we were freshmen, so they are on the back of your program. Um, there will be more tours of the bunkhouse. The aforementioned video that you will see of our class secretary and you know, class videographer, Rick Beyer, is playing continuously in the conference room over here and it shares the timber framing workshop, including a great time lapse photography <coughs> section, as well as for many of the work weekends that so many of you participated in. So we'll also be going down to the bunkhouse for more tours. And I think we may try to take a group shot of people in front of the bunkhouse that. Steve and others can take from the rocks above. We're also um, going to bring the board down and set it on the lower level and unveil the one on the upper. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. Um, so that will be going continuously, and then our reception will officially begin back here at 5. So that's the kind of flow for the rest of the afternoon, but I'd now like to ask the Reverend W. Scott Axford, Master of Divinity, our class chaplain, to share a concluding benediction for our bunkhouse, those who made it possible, and those who will reap its benefits for years to come. I'm going to ask everyone to stand, please. Before we sing his song, we have these concluding words from the college poet Richard Hovey, class of 1885, from his poem entitled The Spirit of Dartmouth. We know no end to our turning, we set no bounds to our feet, but we build us lodges of friendship, wherever it be that we meet. And so, as softly now the early twilight through the trees is stealing down, and remembering the meaning of the two Hebrew words on the college seal, you'll find it on our class rings, El Shaddai, which translates Almighty God of the Hills. May Almighty God, who created us and the still north in its hill winds, and the very granite of New Hampshire, and who has placed them in our hearts and in our souls, and in our veins and in our breath. May El Shaddai bless us and keep a watch over us and over all those who made this class of 1978 bunkhouse possible and those whose hands built it and on those who will stay here and on those who will serve here. And aiming all of us to greet the world from the hills with a hail in the Dartmouth spirit and fellowship, a fellowship which knows no party. May the Lord whose voice cries out in the wilderness bless our coming in and our going out from this time forth and even forevermore, wherever it be that we meet. And let the great class of 1978 give a rouse and say together, Amen. 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 Dear
So grab a glass and let's toast. <laughs> to old friends and to new ones and to those we have yet to make, may the bonds of friendship continue to expand and strengthen Carpe D78.